Morning, everybody. Welcome today. It's great to be together this Sunday morning. Hear these words from the psalmist. It's about our God's love for us and his care for us. For you formed me in my inward parts. You wove me in my mother's womb. I will give thanks to you. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and my soul knows it very well. Let's join together. Would you stand with us? and Let's sing to the Lord who does great and marvelous things. And let's rejoice in that this morning. give God praise and thanks this morning. Lord, marvelous are your works. We stand in awe of you this morning, Lord. We, we can't even comprehend your power, your creativity, your goodness. Thank you for Jesus, for blessing us, for giving us a relationship with you. Help us to stand in awe every day. We love you. 
Heavenly Father, what an incredible reminder it is that you love us by your grace through faith in Jesus Christ, that you, the one who created all things, you created our hearts, you created us in your image, that you choose us. So Lord, as we begin this worship service again, will you draw our hearts closer to yours this morning? Will you open our eyes and will you open our ears? Will you soften our hearts? So indeed, all of us may become more like your son, Jesus Christ. It is his name we pray, and the church says. Amen. Good morning. Grace, mercy, and peace to you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. And as you are seated, I'm going to invite Kyle to come forward at this time, as well as Brett and Holly and their son, Nolan. And Kyle, you're going to go right up those steps and the Raglins are going to follow you. They want you to know this morning that they love God with all their heart and soul and mind and strength. And together, all God's people say, amen. The most important question that you will ever have an opportunity to answer is this. Do you receive as a gift Jesus as the one who is your savior, he forgives you of your sins. And the one who is your Lord, your master, he will always lead you in the very best direction and way of God. 
Kyle, do you receive Jesus as your Savior and your Lord? Yes. Nolan, do you receive Jesus as your Savior and your Lord? Brett, do you receive Jesus as your Savior and your Lord? And Holly, do you receive Jesus as your Savior and your Lord? Yes. Church, can we rejoice together and praise God for that gift of faith? Grace alone. Do you trust Jesus and only Jesus? That's not my question. Jesus tells us that he is the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him. Holly, only Jesus. Nolan, only Jesus. Brett, just Jesus. Kyle, only Jesus. Amen. Do you love God's word along with us? Do you believe that by means of the Holy Spirit, God's word is inspired, infallible, inerrant. It teaches us all that we need to know for our salvation in Jesus Christ alone. And it also teaches us and tells us the very best way to live our lives so that we bring glory to our Father in heaven. Kyle, do you so love God's word? Yes. Brett, do you? Yes. Holly, do you? Yes. Nolan, do you? Amen. So, with everything that you believe in your heart by the power of the Holy Spirit, Will you now be a faithful follower of Jesus? Will you be one of his disciples who not only celebrates your relationship with Jesus, but that you want to share it? You will want to share the, the, the good news of Jesus Christ everywhere you go with everyone you meet. Holly, by the power of the Holy Spirit, will you be such a faithful follower of Jesus? Yes. Nolan, will you? Yes. Brett, will you? Yes. yes. And Kyle, will you? Yes. yes. We're going to circle up in a word of prayer. Nolan, I'm going to take your hand. We're going to swing you right around there. Church, will you please pray with us? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thank you for right here, right now, and thank you that, again, we will sing of how marvelous you are through all the ages. But help us in this time to love Jesus, to celebrate Jesus, and to live out the only saving truth this world has ever known. Thank you for lives transformed. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And Steve has certificates for the Raglans to remember the commitment that Jesus has made to them today in the covenant and promise that they share. As the Raglans are seated, Sarah is going to come and uh, join her husband, Kyle. And in her arms is a beautiful little daughter, Evelyn Kay. And uh, it's their desire uh, to, to take the promise that they believe is in Jesus Christ and to share that promise and that truth with Evelyn as well. Uh, Kyle, it's going to sound like a, a very similar question that you already gave answer to, but, but Sarah, for you to answer this with Kyle, do the two of you again reaffirm your faith in Jesus? He's your Savior, He's your Lord, He is the foundation and the head of your home, the head of your marriage, and the head of your family. Kyle and Sarah, do you agree and affirm that? Yes. Together, do you believe that little Evelyn K is fearfully and wonderfully made. She's a gift from God, and we love her smile right now, which makes it difficult to share the bad news, right? She was also conceived and born in sin and is under the judgment of God. That's the difficult part. But do you believe the rest of what God's word says? That Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. Only Jesus shed his blood for the forgiveness of our sins and all of those who will one day confess and believe. And we pray that one day Evelyn will so confess and, and so believe. So do you believe that that promise of Jesus is extended to her, Kyle and Sarah, do you? Yes. Amen. So how are we gonna take the promise of scripture and the hope of Jesus and how are we going to uh, bring that to little Evelyn's heart and, and to her mind? Well, it's the blessing of a mom and a dad who are first of all committed to Christ. You are God's answer to that question. Will you disciple? Will you train up? Will you love and lead your daughter, Evelyn, to Jesus? Will you pray with her and teach her how to pray? Will you read to her from God's word and teach her how to read it for herself? Uh, will you teach her how to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong, please forgive me. 
because ultimately one day, that's the conversation and the prayer and the confession that we want her to have with Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit, Kyle and Sarah, will you do that for Evelyn? Yeah. Amen. Pastor Brent. Church, will you please stand? Evelyn, shining, K, joyful in front of you. The covenant of baptism is such a beautiful promise. When we are in the faith, the commitment that God has for this child, the commitment that mom and dad have for this child is, is unbreakable. It'll last forever. The commitment that they just made that they will do everything within their power, everything with the, the ability of the Holy Spirit to raise Evelyn to become the woman God created her to be, they will do that faithfully. And God's promise is God will do the exact same thing faithfully all of her life, pursuing her and giving her opportunities to recognize that he is the way, the truth, and the life. That her way of salvation is only found in him. The third part of that covenant is you, the church, the faith family. Will you, by the power of God, through the Holy Spirit, will you, will you pray for her? Will you encourage her? Will you teach her, if God put it on your heart, whether that's VBS, whether that's Sunday school, whether that's helping out in, in children and worship or perhaps youth group when she's a little bit older. Will you help her become the woman God created her to be? If you do agree to your end of that covenant, please say, I do. Thank you. You may be seated. And Kyle and Sarah, I'll have you step right this way. And Kyle, as you hold Evelyn over the water, what a wonderful promise that God is going to give the two of you everything you need to bless the gift of this life in your arms. Evelyn K. Hakais, I baptize you in the name of the Father. I baptize you in the name of the Son. And I baptize you in the name of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Church, will you pray with us? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you for your promise. We thank you for your covenant. We thank you for your word. We thank you for choosing us, finding us in our brokenness, and making us whole. Even one day giving us a brand new heart. As this promise is now received and made today, will you please bless Kyle and Sarah. Give them everything that they need to love and care well for Evelyn. And one day, may we all together be able to hear her yes to Jesus as Savior and Lord. For we pray it only in his name. Amen. Church, would you praise God for his faithfulness, for his covenant, for his promise, for his house. And again, take an opportunity if, uh, if you have not yet uh, had a, a chance to, to meet Kyle and Sarah, encourage them and, uh, and welcome them and commit yourself to praying for Evelyn. One of the, the strong characteristics of, of fellowship is that when we put our hearts to something, we are so committed to it. So that, that question that we ask at every baptism, thank you for pouring your heart into that too. And where God allows, giving you the opportunity to be uh, uh, an image bearer of Jesus Christ for her. One of the commitments that, that we make here at, at fellowship is to, to go deep with ministries that we support here. And we do that in a number of ways. And, and in 2023, we're going to be reintroducing our, our reverse offerings. And, and today is the first one of the year uh, where the outreach team has assigned our hand-to-hand -hand ministries as a recipient of our reverse offering. At the end of today's service, there is going to be individuals from the outreach team that are going to be at the exits of the doors, and they're just going to be holding some baskets. Feel free if you like. You can walk past if you don't. But inside of each basket is a, is a little slip of paper, and on that paper identifies an item that, that we are hoping to collect a whole lot of to bless the kids that are within the, the Godwin Heights public school system. 
If you remember, every single week we feed just over 200 children um, who would otherwise go without food for the weekend. So this is to help offset the cost of that. Please bring those slips back with the items next week, Sunday. There is a table in the back of the lobby, on the side of the lobby, excuse me, where you can drop those off. But in the meantime, will you please take a look at this video? It's a miracle, it's a miracle. I don't know where I'm sleeping this weekend, but at least I have food. Hey, this is come from the tooth fairy. Is it okay if I share this with my little brother? He gets hungry too. I really, really like the food I get. Look at this cool pizza dinner I get to make tonight. It was really hard for me and my mom, and we needed the food. At first I was a little embarrassed that I needed hand to hand, but now I know I don't have to be embarrassed. My mom works a lot, and it's hard for her to feed me and my three brothers. So over the last uh, several months, many of you have helped with, with packing the meals every other um, Sunday morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you for just going to the tables and, and grabbing a, a plastic bag and, and walking up and down and, and collecting those items for those kids. Also, a lot of you have been helping deliver, which is a beautiful blessing that we have to be able to see the, the smiling faces of those little kiddos as you walk down the halls. So thank you for praying, thank you for donating, thank you for helping in any way if you have and looking forward to serving with, with some perhaps that have yet to, to, to sign on or, or have the opportunity to do so. Um, and again, as you leave the sanctuary, there's going to be little slips. Feel free to grab one of those as, as you leave. Let's go to God in prayer, shall we? Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for the marvelous grace that we do have in you. Father, your word is clear that, that all things are a gift and, and life itself is a gift. And Father, we know that, uh, that a friend of ours, Gretchen, has, has lived a good life. And we mourn with Andre as she has now walked into her eternal home with you. And Lord, we're so thankful for the gift of, of life, yes but eternal life, knowing that, that when we leave this earth, because of the graces found in the life and the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that today Gretchen is more alive than ever before. So Lord, as we mourn, and we do, we say thank you for the assurance of where she is. Not just Gretchen, Father, but all of those of us in our, in our families and in our friends' circles who have, who have left this earth in the faith, we know that they too are more alive than ever before. Father, what a great assurance of the marvelous love you have for us, that Jesus took our place, that as these individuals just before us this morning they made a commitment before us, ultimately you, that they do surrender their hearts and their lives to your word, to your ways, they too are secured in the faith, centered on Jesus Christ. Father, we want to lift up to you the surgeries that are going to be taking, this, taking place this week. We, we know of Chris Feenstra as she broke her ankle. She's going into surgery. Lord, that is a, a delicate surgery with a week and a, a month and a half of, of being weight-bearing. Lord, we pray, for, we pray for her peace and we pray for patience. And Lord, we do pray for complete healing. We pray for Glenn as he is at Mary Free Bed. Pray for his therapy. May his strength and mobility increase. And Lord, for Darla Ikemai, she was able to be returned home after being hospitalized. 
God, thank you for being with her and the, and the rest of the individuals who were hospitalized this past week and able to come home. Father, you are with us in those times in our lives where we feel like, like we are alone whether we feel like we are alone in a hospital room or perhaps in our homes where it's quiet, the phone's hardly ringing and the doorbell hardly goes off. Sometimes, Father, we can be so alone in a, in a busy, busy life where we are running around meeting deadlines with a schedule that is so packed, Father, that we are, that we are unable to have communication that we are able to, unable to listen, unable to stop and pause and reflect on how good you are. So Father, wherever we are this morning, whether we are so busy that we don't know who you are, whether we are isolated and we need you today, whether we are scared, whether we are anxious, Lord, even, even for those of us in this room who are so full of life, who are celebrating your goodness. Wherever we are, Father, meet us there today. Remind us of who you are. Remind us of the joy of our salvation that is only found in Jesus Christ. And Lord, for the, the meals that will be made, as we go home, as we go grocery shopping this week, as we as we think of these families that will, that will be blessed out of the generosity of this church. Thank you for letting us be a part of their lives in this simple but yet very impactful way. May our generosity be an outpouring of the love that you have for us. May we bless a lot of these families, sustain them in their f food insecurities. And Father, as now as we prepare to turn, open up your word, we say thank you for Sean. What a great pastor and leader he is. Open our eyes and open our ears and soften our hearts, Father. May we become more like you today, for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, I want to invite the children to come forward for a children's message as they're doing so. Um, there are some blue cards in front of you if you're new with us or if you have a specific prayer request that you'd like one of the pastors to know about. Please identify who you are, the prayer request, contact information so we can get back with you. Also, there are some black friendship pads on the inside aisles of each row. We'd love to know who you are, who's here, who's worshiping with us. Please identify where that is, sign it, pass it along, and then return it to where it came from. Thank you so much. And we do have a couple of kids more coming, so I'm going to take one more opportunity for a, an announcement. Next week, Sunday, is communion. I want to encourage you to go before the Lord, one-on-one, -on -one in prayer, and asking Him for Him to search your heart. If there's anything that needs to be repented of or I brought before, may you do so before you come here next week, before you participate in, in the Lord's Supper as we reflect on the love that God has for us as his son Jesus Christ laid his life down for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Thank you. All right, you ready? One, two, three. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so I need your help today. I need you to answer a question that I have about something I'm pretty sure you've seen before. Fire. Fire. Is it good or is it bad? What do you think? Raise your hand if you think it's good. Raise your hand if you think it's bad. Would you think I was crazy if I told you it was both? You see, with fire, we could light a candle that could smell up a, a beautiful house. It could smell really, really nice. But with that same flame, if the candle got tipped over, it could light our house on fire and burn it to the ground. Well, that's not good, right? But the candle was nice, right? Yeah. With fire, we could cook food on a campfire, like when we go camping, roast a, a hot dog or maybe a marshmallow. Yeah, that's good. 
But with that same campfire, if we don't put it out before we go to sleep at night, we could light a forest on fire. That's not good, is it? No. Yeah, we could burn down the whole forest. And fire can keep us warm, right? That's good. But if we get too close to it, it can also burn us, right? Ouch, that's not good. I don't tell you this to scare you, but I do want to tell you, be careful when we're around fire, right? Did you know that the Bible says that the tongue is like fire? Stick your tongue out for me for just a second and look down. Is it on fire? No? Is it on fire? No. But with the tongue, we can tell people we love them, but then we can turn and say bad things about them either to them or maybe behind their back. That's not good. We can taste the food that God has given us, the good marshmallows and chocolates and candies and things, but then with the same tongue, we can complain to God about the food we don't want to eat, the vegetables or the fruits that we don't like, right? That's not good. You see, the tongue has the ability to praise God and to pray to him and to thank him, but it also has the ability to question his love for us when he doesn't do what we want him to. We have to be careful with our tongues. They're like fire, and they have the ability to spark a life and to teach them things about Jesus, right? but it also has the ability to hurt someone. So I hope the next time that you open your mouth to talk to someone, think of your tongue like fire. Stick it out for just another minute. Stick your tongue out and look down and think about how your tongue is like fire. It has the ability to spark something, and I hope that it sparks a love for Jesus in yourself and in others, okay? Can you use your tongue for good? Can you use your tongue for bad? You can do both, but let's choose good, okay? Let's pray. Father in heaven, may our tongues always speak of your goodness. May they always thank you for the good things you have given us and thank you even for the things that are hard for us to to go through. Father, help us to understand that the trials that we go through are things that are teaching us and that we pray that we would honor you with our lives each and every day. Father, help us to speak boldly the truth in love and in grace, truthfully speaking about your word, teaching others about you and to love you. And may we do so as well. In Jesus' name and all God's children said, amen. You can go back to your seat or uh, to children in worship if you're three through kindergarten. Would you stand with us, please, and we'll sing a new song, rejoicing in what is to come in heaven as we prepare our hearts for God's word today. How I long to breathe the air of heaven where pain is gone and mercy fills the streets to look upon the one who led to save me and walk with for all eternity. There will be a day when all will be born again. There will be a day when death will be no more. Standing face to face with me who guided us
stand beside the heroes of the day. With one voice, a thousand generations sing worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Sing that again. And on that day. God's people say, Amen. Together, let's agree in God's Word. I'm in the book of James this morning, chapter 3. We're actually going to consider verses 1 through 12. And if you're using a Bible that's provided for you, page 1200 will bring you immediately to that place. We're taking the next uh, month of Sundays to uh, consider how well we communicate, or maybe sometimes we miscommunicate. We, we can struggle uh, in multiple forms of communication, and God cares about what we say. He cares about how we listen. He cares about what we write, or what we repeat, or what we tweet, or what we post. Communication matters to God, and, and therefore it matters to us as His children. So with Bibles open, will you please pray with me? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, will you please interrupt our lives right now? Holy Spirit, as you reside in the heart of every woman and man, every adult and child who accepts Jesus as Savior and serves Him as Lord, will you indeed interrupt and grab our attention, heart and mind, Give us the ability to hear, to read, to focus. Give us the desire to follow and to bring you glory by living a life that you have redeemed. May it be so. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You never say anything. Well, you never shut up. I can't believe you said that. Well, that's not what I meant. You always overreact. Look at me when I'm talking to you. You never listen to me. You're always on the phone. Would you just tell me what you're thinking? You always overreact. Don't roll your eyes at me. Stop yelling at me. What did you say about me? Who told you that? Have you ever heard any of those? Or maybe said any of those? 
We do struggle to communicate. We struggle to express ourselves in a godly way. We can struggle to communicate in our marriage, no matter how many years we've been married. We can struggle to communicate with, with our children or with our grandchildren. We, we struggle to communicate at work, at school, in our friendships, with complete strangers. We struggle to communicate in the house of, of God with fellow believers. Too often our communication is, is fueled and filled by emotions and, and feelings, overwhelming us with, with arrogance and, and fear combined. Instead of communicating something clearly and trying to bring about a solution or, or an agreed upon resolution, instead of doing that, battle lines are drawn. And, and one needs to be right and one needs to be wrong, a winner and a loser. But when we communicate like that, nobody wins. And that's why over the next month of, of Sundays, we're going to walk through Scripture. We're going to walk through the only saving truth that this world has, has ever known. We want, to, we want to identify God's means, God's way, God's desire for, for how we communicate together. We're going to be reminded how all of us at times selfishly tear down others. And we're going to see how God would have us to communicate to intentionally build one another up. Because we need to be people who pray and, and practice the, the words of the psalmist. You know this from Psalm 19. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my, my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. You see, when our, when our hearts are filled that way, when our hearts are filled with, with the things of God, when our hearts are filled with the Word of God, when our hearts are filled with the Spirit of God, when our hearts are filled with the things of God, it's going to affect and change what comes out of our mouths. Amen, church? And we all need that transformation. So this morning, we're just going to, we're going to start, we're going to do an, an introduction to this thing right here, our mouths, and, and specifically, it's James, and he's talking about our tongues, and he describes the, the situation this way. James chapter 3, I'm beginning to read at verse 1. Listen to the word of God. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with stricter greatness, greater strictness. For we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, he's a perfect man, able also to bridle his whole body. If we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the ships also. Though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among our members staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, with it we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring uh, pour forth from the same opening, both fresh and salt water? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives, or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. 
Uh, within those 12 verses, I hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, you're able to see that, that, that our brother James is bringing us both warning and encouragement as we take an, an introductory dive into our need to express ourselves well and to communicate well. And, and as he begins here with, with verse 1, he, he says something about teaching. Say that word with me, about teaching. He says, for, for those of you who desire to teach, for those of you who would like to be teachers, he says, I, I need you to see what, what God would say about that. So verse 1 again, not many of you should become teachers, my brothers, for you know that we who teach will be judged with, what's it say? Greater strictness. It, God has high expectations. God, who is holy, 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 has, has high expectations for those who teach, for those who train, for those who disciple others, because we are teaching and training and discipling in the word of God. So God cares very much about teachers. He cares very much about pastors. He cares very much about those who, who serve on a staff within a Christian church, those who are called to serve as an elder or a deacon or a consistory or, or a council member. God is very much concerned and has great and tremendously high expectations for them. But what about parents? And, and, and not to pick on Kyle or Sarah, but you were just standing here <laughs> with Evelyn. What about any of us who've, who've ever been blessed to be a parent of one or, or more children? Are we not teachers? Are, are we not training? Are we... Are we not discipling our children in the way that they should go? Proverbs 22, verse, verse 6. The answer, yes, we are. As parents, as grandparents or great-grandparents, all of us are, are teachers. And so the question, how are we doing in our teaching? As we teach, as we train, are we raising up our children in the way that that they should go. Now here's where God becomes very specific. God is looking for teachers who are consistent in what they say and in what they do. Say that with me. In what they say and in what they do. Look down at verse 2. For we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says... He's a perfect man, able also to, to bridle his whole body. There's a little hint of, of sarcasm here as, as James writes. Obviously, there, there is not a single perfect person here this morning. We will not attain or arrive upon perfection this side of glory, this side of heaven. Are we forgiven? Yes, but we are not in perfection. We are in the walk and pursuit of, of sanctification. But the point is this. As teachers, as parents, as, as people who have an opportunity to train and, and disciple the lives of those around us, God is, is desiring that what we say match what we do. That, that what we speak of and communicate to others is what we are actually following and living out and doing in our own lives. You know, case in point, I find, I find myself guilty. Now, you all know this. Do I have a cell phone yet? No, I do not. But I have an iPad. Boy, isn't that a great improvement? Yeah? You know, I decided to go with something bigger, right? And, and here's what I find. I can be at home with that iPad, and it has a, a wonderful little foot on the back of it that can fold out. And you know what? You can just stick that thing right here over your hand, and I can walk around the house with it like this, doing stuff. You know, oh, boop, boop. Oh, what TV ate? Boop. Oh, let's go over here to boop. 
And, and pretty soon, I'm, I'm spending all this time on this iPad. Any of you ever get a report of how much time you've spent on a screen in the course of a week? You ever get that? Ever get that, anybody? Are you ever ashamed or surprised? Boy, I got to tell you, I'm ashamed and I'm surprised. You know, sometimes we, we, we tell our children, you know what, it's important for you to read God's Word. You need to start reading God's Word when you're a little girl and when you're a little boy. You need to spend time in the Word of God and commit to it and read it and love it and memorize it and hide it in your heart. And you know what, sometimes we, we can be saying that, and yet where are we spending all of our time? Is it in Scripture or, or is it on the screen? Sometimes we tell our children how important it is to, to give back to God of our, of our time and, and our talent and, and our, our treasure. And, and yet our kids look at us and, and they don't see much commitment of, of time or talent or, or treasure. It, it's something we say and, and, and it's a value that we raise up. But you know what? Our, our kids see inconsistency. And so, first of all, if we're going to communicate, if we're going to, if we're going to be those who teach and, and train up another generation, if we're going to be those who teach and, and disciple as teachers, God has high expectations, and he desires that what we say and what we do match. Amen, church? God also, God also cares about the fact that we need to tame the tongue. Say that with me. We need to tame the tongue. The tongue. You should never leave your tongue unsupervised. You should never leave your tongue by itself. You should never let your tongue go for a walk on its own because it's going to get itself in trouble every single time. I was thinking this past week when I was a, when I was a little boy, there's actually pictures of this, and it makes my brothers laugh every single time. My mom used to take a rope and she would tie that rope to my belt loop in the back. And then she would tie the other end of that rope to the clothesline pole. <laughs> All right, let's be serious. Anybody here ever do that to your children? Huh. I didn't think it was right either. And my brothers just comment how I used to just run around that clothesline pole until that rope was wrapped up nice and tight, and then I'd run around the other way until that rope was all completely unbound. But you know what? It kept me out of trouble. At least that's what they tell me. My mother didn't have to keep her eyes on me all the time. I was supervised by the rope, apparently. Always keep an eye on your tongue. Never let your tongue go unsupervised. Never let your tongue be unmonitored because it will get itself in trouble. The tongue must be tamed. The tongue must be guided. The tongue must be steered. James gives two illustrations of this beginning uh, there at verse 3. Look down. He says, if we put bits into the mouths of horses so that they obey us, we guide their whole bodies as well. Look at the, look at the ships also. Though they're so large and are driven by strong winds, they're guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the, the who? The pilot. Wherever the will of the pilot directs. Here's the truth. For everybody here who who's received Jesus as Savior, for everybody here who's committed to serving Jesus as Lord, in your heart resides the power of the Holy Spirit. We always say the same powerful Spirit who raised a, a dead Jesus back to life and strengthened him to walk out of death into life and to ascend into heaven. The same powerful Spirit resides within the heart and life of every single confessing believer here this morning. Amen, church? And here's the deal. We need to surrender every single day to the power of the Holy Spirit in us. You see, that Holy Spirit is our supervisor. That Holy Spirit is our pilot. That Holy Spirit is our guide. That Holy Spirit puts the bit in our mouth that we need to bite upon so that he can steer and direct our words. That Holy Spirit needs to move the rudder of the ship of our lives, guiding what we say and how we say it. We shouldn't say anything. 
We shouldn't speak a single word. We shouldn't write anything. We shouldn't text anything. We shouldn't post anything. We shouldn't tweet anything without, first of all, consulting our supervisor. Have you ever seen something online and it frustrated you? Anybody? Ever see something posted online, made you mad? Ever done that? Boy, you're just all happy people this morning, aren't you? Right? I'm going to assume that, that at times you have seen something online and it has frustrated you, gotten you all riled up. And, and, and sometimes when you read something that, that's posted, what do you immediately do? What? Respond. respond. How many of you, like Amy, have ever responded to something like that right away? Huh? And do we always respond in the right way? You ever post something and then you read what you posted and go, oh boy. You see, be, because we didn't consult our supervisor. And it happens just that quickly. We fail to run it through the Holy Spirit. We've not fully surrendered ourselves to the Holy Spirit as pilot and guide, as the one who turns the rudder, as the one who would pull back on the bit in our mouth to have us bite and not speak too quickly. Our tongue needs to be tamed, and we can't do it on our own, only the power of the Holy Spirit. We have to ask the Spirit, Spirit, are these words valuable? Is what I'm about to say going to edify someone's life? Is it going to give God glory? Is it going to build up that person? Is it going to advance the kingdom of God? Is what I'm about to say based on God's truth or is it based upon how I'm feeling and the emotion right now that has been riled up within me? Just, just a question. I, I wonder where, where you're most likely to ignore the Spirit. When are you, when are you most likely to, to try to pull the bit out of your mouth? What types of situations? Or, or with who? It, it's good to know those most challenging of times because those are the, the times especially we need the Spirit to tame our tongue. Amen, church? Teaching our words and our actions must a line in order for our communication to be effective. Taming the tongue, can't do it on our own. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to surrender every word to him because if we don't, number three, we are going to terrorize. Say that with me. Terrorize. An untamed tongue, an unsupervised tongue, a tongue left to itself is an absolute terror. Terrorizing and attacking the lives of others, whether it be intentional or unintentional, conscious or, or unconscious, the damage remains the same. Look down there, partway through verse 5, James writes, How great a forest is set ablaze by such a small fire, and the tongue is a fire, a world of unrighteousness. The tongue is set among the members, our members, staining the whole body, setting on fire the entire course of life, and set on fire by what? By hell. An untamed tongue terrorizes. Saying whatever you feel like. Oh, I don't care what they think about what I say. Nobody can tell me to be quiet. 
repeating a story that isn't ours to share, telling a rumor as if it's truth, gossiping with maybe even a few exaggerated details, claiming as truth something that hasn't even been proven. Lying. This is how we burn down a forest. This is how we burn a life. This is how we terrorize other people with our thoughtless expressions. which James says are motivated and rooted in hell. I met with a 24-year-old young man on Thursday of this week. And I want to tell you, he sat in my office and he received Christ as Savior and Lord. So can we celebrate that right now? A moment? Yeah? Yeah? And, and, and as, he was, as he was sharing that story, he said, you know, over the last, over the last couple of days, over the last few days, he said, I've, I've noticed I am biting my tongue a lot more. As he's a part of conversations, as he's at work in life, He's been biting his tongue and not just saying everything that comes to mind. I I wonder if, if any of us have started any fires lately. I certainly know many of us have been burned. You know, there's those who who terrorize and there's those who who stand around and, and listen to it all. Both are equally guilty. You know, maybe if I didn't stand around listening to it all, maybe if we didn't stand around listening to it all, the one speaking would grow silent because they don't have an audience. An unclaimed tongue is an awful terror. Well, well, let's, let's wrap up here this morning on this first Sunday. Let's, let's look at one word of encouragement from James because James says when it comes right down to it, this marvelous instrument of the tongue, this ability to communicate, the ability to speak, the, the ability to write, the ability to post, you know what? It, it is a wonderful opportunity, finally, fourthly, to testify. Say that with me, to testify. To testify to the one true God, to testify to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who has shed his blood for the full forgiveness of our sins, to testify to the power of the Holy Spirit, to testify to the fact that one day Jesus is going to return. He is going to gather his bride, the church, to himself. He's going to bring us to the glorious wedding feast where we shall behold the face of God and spend all of eternity with him. And all God's people say, Amen. You see, this is our testimony. To this, we have the opportunity to testify every single day with what we say and how we live our lives. Psalm 35, verse 28 says this, My tongue shall tell of your righteousness and and of your praise all the day long. That is how we testify. That is how we need to communicate. Those are the lives that we must be living. But in the midst of our testifying and praise, 
We struggle when we pause to gossip and curse. Verse 9, with it, with the tongue, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. I'm going to leave us, I'm going to leave us right here this morning. I'm just going to ask this question. When it comes to, when it comes to testifying, I'd like you to do this all the time. I, I, would, I'd, I need to do this all the time by the power of the Holy Spirit. But let's just try it for a day first, right? For a day. How many times are you telling a story about someone? That, that's called gossiping or cursing, okay? How many times are you doing that? How many times are you telling somebody about the glory of our God and his love in Jesus Christ and the blessing and the gift of your life in him and the promise that awaits all of those who believe? I wonder, can we commit to that this next week, church? Can we do that? Yes? Yes. How many times are we testifying to the victory that is ours in Jesus Christ? not giving in to hurtful language, gossip, or terrorizing cursing of another. What a marvelous little instrument when we use it well. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may it be so. You have much to say as we are learning what to say and, and how to say it. So help us to begin again, uh, taking captive every single word and, and every single expression, that we not be guided or strengthened by emotion and, and feelings in the moment, but that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we would speak the truth in love, desiring to share and show Christ in every and all ways. And this we desire in Jesus' name. Amen. Church, if you're able to stand, would you please do so? Indeed, we want our lives to be built upon the one who is Jesus, built upon him, strengthened by the power of the Holy Spirit, desiring that our Father in heaven smile as he witnesses our faithful walk every single day, bringing glory to him and, and to him alone. And as we go forth to do that again this week, know this, your Father in heaven loves you with an unbreakable love. His son, Jesus, has forgiven you of all of your sins. You are fully restored. And the power of the Holy Spirit is the strength that we need for every good work and word that our Father has prepared for us in advance. Your loved church, God bless you. Amen.